During his visit to Turkey back in June, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said the two countries had a goal to boost trade to $5 billion a year. Sharif said it wasn't an ambitious goal given the decades of close ties Turkey and Pakistan shared. Now that $5 billion target could be in reach with the signing of a new preferential trade agreement. Pakistan's Prime Minister was on hand to witness the signing of the trade agreement, which will come into effect starting next year. Dubbed the Trade and Goods Pact, the deal will reduce duties and tariffs while including more safeguards and channels to resolve trade disputes. The two countries' total trade volume was worth just $883 million last year. Pakistan's Minister for Commerce, Syed Navid Kumar, who signed the agreement, said Islamabad also looked forward to working towards materializing a free trade agreement with Turkey in the future. And to discuss what this new trade deal could mean and overall relations between Ankara and Islamabad, I'm joined by Pakistan's ambassador to Turkey, His Excellency Mohamed Sirus Sajat Kazi. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So Pakistan and Turkey have been enjoying historical relations which are growing in different domains, including defense, political, culture and education. How will a newly signed trade deal boost economic ties between the two countries. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And yes, uh, you are right uh, to mention uh, about this new trade deal that was signed during the visit of uh, the Turkish Minister of Commerce, Excellency Mohammed Mush to Pakistan only a few days back. The two sides have been working on this deal for quite a long time. And uh, this deal the basic uh, contours of this deal, if you allow me, it's a little complicated, so I will take the liberty of consulting my papers. Uh, it gives, uh, Pakistan has agreed to give concessions on about 130 tariff lines to Turkey, and Turkey has agreed to give concessions to Pakistan on about 261 tariff lines. From the Pakistan side, for instance, what we look forward to receiving in Pakistan from Turkey uh, under this deal are fresh and dry fruits, uh, soybean cake used for animal feed, ingredients for food preparations, medicinal products, toiletries and skin care products, motor vehicle parts, transmission parts of motor vehicles, aluminum, iron, paper and paperboard and raw material. It's a long list, mm -hmm. but you get a fair idea. Similarly, on the Turkish side, Pakistan will be able to send fish, fresh and chilled potatoes, few types of spices, various categories of uh, and qualities of rice, ingredients used in confectionery and uh, food preparations, beauty and skill care products, plates, sheets, films, surgical care uh, products, tableware, kitchenware, etc. So uh, what, this, uh, what, this, what this deal does is that it gives both Turkey and Pakistan, Pakistan a number of new trade uh, avenues to promote trade. Of course, there are traditional items that both countries buy and sell to each other, for instance, from Pakistan, some textiles, from Turkey, some machinery. But this, these 261 lines from Turkey and 130 lines from Pakistan would then uh, substantially increase, increase the basket of trade between the two countries and thus contribute to achieving a higher level of trade between the yes. two countries, which given the excellent political relations between the two uh, countries has, is, has not been very impressive so far. Yes, so Mr. Ambassador, as you've mentioned, despite deep-rooted relations, trade volume between the two countries hasn't lived up to uh, their its potential so far. It stands less than $1 billion a year. So why it is taking both countries so long to sign a free trade agreement? I mean, are there any obstacles? Uh, more than obstacles, perhaps a certain amount of misunderstanding. Uh, for instance, to give you an illustration that Pakistan is primarily uh, an exporter of textile products and Turkey also still has a large portion of its exports are also textiles. And there is a misperception on the Turkish side that perhaps Pakistan is a competitor. Though we see ourselves as a natural complement to Turkish textile industry, we, fee, we should feed into your textile industry so that then you can sell it onwards to a third market. Uh, this was a, one of the many uh, small reasons that may be responsible for the rather unimpressive trade uh, volume between the two countries. So you, but as you see, talking this agreement about, will help us address that. Yes, you are talking about some misunderstandings and misperceptions. So with this deal, have those um, disagreements uh, ironed out? 
this deal what this deal does is that it expands the entire spectrum of trade between the two countries from the existing number of lines adding 261 almost 300 uh, tariff lines more so it gives more opportunities for the two countries to uh, engage in trade to sell it to sell to each other and this is very important given that our leadership only a couple of months back agreed to raise the trade volume between the two countries in three years to $5 billion. So during his last visit to Turkey, Pakistan's uh, Prime Minister Shafaz Sharif said his country expects further cooperation in the defense sector, including the sale of Turkish-made attack helicopters. Do we expect more defense deals between the two countries moving forward? Oh, absolutely. Pakistan and Turkey are natural partners in so many areas, but particularly so in defense. We are of a similar size. We are located in difficult uh, geographies. Unfortunately, we have been sanctioned uh, uh, unjustly and our security needs have been ignored by other countries who we deem as our friends. So, uh, and there exists between Pakistan and Turkey a natural level of trust. So, given our circumstances, Pakistan and Turkey are natural partners in the field of defense uh, cooperation and it's a very healthy defense cooperation. There are high level visits between the leader, military leadership of the two countries. There are tra exchange pro training and exchange programs. We participate in each other's exercises. At the same time now also, and this is a rel relatively recent phenomenon, five, six years, we are also engaged in substantial uh, defense uh, uh, agreements and trade. Pakistan, for instance, has contracted to purchase four Milgem class uh, naval corvettes from Turkey. Turkey is purchasing 50 plus primary aircraft trainers from Pakistan. And attack helicopter is, of course, one of the uh, uh, main deals that is underway. Of course, there are some difficulties on account of the engine because the engine is produced in a third country. And right now it has not given Turkey permission to export that engine to Pakistan, but we are working on it. And yes, we look forward to receiving the attack helicopter in our inventory. It will significantly boost our defense capability. Apart from this trade deal, Pakistan has big goals when it comes to Turkey's involvement in things like infrastructure. And lately, Pakistan has invited uh, Turkey to take part in the multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor project. What value and expertise do you think Turkey would bring in? Oh, Turkey is one of the world's great uh, 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 international uh, contractor. Uh, many of the, in fact, if, if you allow me to rephrase, Turkish infrastructure development firms are amongst the best in the world. Only two days back, for instance, our prime minister received the CEO, the board of the chairman, board of directors of Limak Turkish Group in Pakistan. We see Turkish as a natural partner also in these infrastructure deals, and particularly also in the CPEC. Right now, if I, if you allow me, Limak, for instance, has been operating, uh, has been building roads in Pakistan for quite some time now, and some of the roads are being built under the larger, broad rubric of the CPEC. Uh, program that you just mentioned. So we would welcome uh, Turkey to participate in the various uh, aspects of the pro CPEC project. Of course, since CPEC project is primarily a connectivity project and connectivity projects can only succeed when, it, when they connect various economies and countries and Turkey is a big regional economy uh, in this regard and we look forward to Turkish participation in it. So uh, Turkey and Pakistan are both part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Will this latest trade deal be a complementary to that and are there more future trade deals in the future? Yes, uh, absolutely. The trade deal, what the trade deal will do, though it's not directly related to CPEC, but what the trade deal will do is create a milieu or an environment of Pro, a pro-trade environment between the two countries. And the more trade there is, the more need for connectivity there will be to transport these goods that we are purchasing from Turkey or that we are selling to Turkey. And for that, we need channels other than just the regular sea channels. For instance, to give you an illustration, in the last six, seven months, the two countries have been working hard to reinvigorate the, Pakistan, the Iran, Tehran, the Islamabad, Tehran, Istanbul uh, train service. Uh, which has six trains have already completed the journey and we are in the process of trying to make it sustainable in the sense that it's a big predictable service that exporters on both sides can use. And, and it, an additional thing that will happen is that this agreement that we are talking about, it so far only addresses trade in goods. 
there is a big dimension of trade in services that is also there and even in trade of trade in goods there is always the possibility of increasing the number of tariff lines that the two countries are giving concessions on to each other yes. so yes it creates a good foundation and it will augment the general uh, pro trade milieu between the two countries so many turkish companies in the private sector have invested in pakistan but not as many pakistani companies are actively uh, working in Turkey, will this deal uh, help close that gap? Of course, this will. Of course, this is not a trade. This is not an investment agreement. But regardless of that, the one reason, of course, is that why, why a lesser or smaller Pakistani companies are invested in Turkey because of the disparity in the size of the two countries' economies. But having said this, according to the latest count, there are about 306 Pakistani companies. Uh, present or working in Turkey, and this is a fair amount. This is a fairly big number, and this will, inshallah, only go up once the trade agreement helps facilitate more trade between the two countries. There is always a healthy investment environment between the two countries. There are big Turkish companies invested in Pakistan. Archilek has bought our biggest white goods producer, Dolans, and is now serving the Pakistani market. Not only is it serving the Pakistani market, it is exporting onwards from Pakistan. So uh, the news on the economic front are all good. All right, Mr. Ambassador, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.